Hi, I'm Leve. I'm here in Vancouver. I'm gonna go see Nardwar. Let's go! It's Nardwar from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Good to meet you. Thanks for coming to Neptune Records. Early! Thank you for having me. Nightwalk. 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 Who are you? That is a great question. I ask myself the same thing every single day. Um, I, I guess I am a singer of of the name Leve. You are Leve. I am Leve. Yes. Welcome to Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Well, thank you. I'm I'm excited to be here. And right off the bat, I have a gift for you, oh. an Oscar Peterson tennis. Oh my goodness! Tennis. I love Oscar Peterson from 1952. 1952. And he is Canadian. He is. Ca you know, I know that he's Canadian because I just played at Ottawa Jazz this summer and I went to the Oscar Peterson like memorial statue thing. He actually played in Vancouver at the Penthouse Nightclub and the piano is still there. Is it? I'm going to have to I'm just going to have to go. I want to play that piano. Well, I was curious. Have you played on any famous pianos? I have played on some famous pianos. I recorded um, both my last album and this uh, new album, Bewitched, at a studio in, in Hollywood called East West that has Frank Sinatra's old Steinway, actually. So I have tickled those ivories. And now you have Oscar Peterson as 10-inch. What can you see about Oscar Peterson and Levy? I can say that I think he is, well, I think he's probably my favorite jazz pianist. Like, so the, I got introduced to him first actually listening to Ella Fitzgerald and I heard uh, records that Ella, Ella had recorded with him and I just thought his piano playing was really, really beautiful and had a lot of classical undertones to it. And I grew up playing classical music. So I think, yeah, I think that was kind of like the connection for me. And on this 10-inch, special artwork by David Stone Martin. He did all the cool jazz covers. I, they just don't make album covers like this anymore. I, it's so, it's just like, it's, yeah, pieces of art. They, they belong in a museum. Although, thank you, DistroKid. Thank you, DistroKid. Hey, DistroKid, you know, start, started everything for me. I mean, that was the first place I, I released music, so. No vinyl. No vinyl, no. But I do love vinyl. I have vinyl now. <laughs> How many orchestras have you played with? How many orchestras as a cellist or as a singer? Just as a singer. As a singer. Um, well, I just played with the China Philharmonic and the LA Philharmonic. Um, Iceland, I just did the National Symphony as well. So I think four or five now maybe or something. But we have some lined up that I'm not allowed to talk about. Well, how hard is it to get an orchestra lined up on board? Not everybody can do that. How, how much negotiation is there? You know, I think there's definitely a lot of negotiation. I, I've been putting in the work early in that. I think I've, I've been playing with, uh, playing. I've been in the orchestra world since I was a baby. So it's kind of, um, yeah, but I mean, the, the musicians themselves lining up an orchestra to play, they've been training their whole lives to do that. But they convince the operators, the gatekeepers. Well, I think, you know, showing them that I care about the art, care about classical music and care about... Um, yeah, care, care about classical music is, is, is a big factor in it. But I think um, also convincing them that I have, I mean, I have a fairly young fan base and, and symphony orchestras tend to have older, you know, audiences. And I think, you know, what I tell them I bring to the table is kind of like a new, new uh, generation of listeners. I hope that's what I bring to the table. Well, I love that you list like orchestras as features. A lot of people have like different artists as features, but you have orchestras. Yeah, I think it's so funny. Like my, the only feature on my album is is the Philharmonia Orchestra. And um, so I think that's just funny. It's cool. You've played harpa. I have played harpa. You know harpa? Yeah, what can you say about harpa? Iceland. Harpa is, um, well, harpa means harp in Icelandic which I, which you've probably gathered, but, um, 
yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful kind of cultural hub in Iceland. Um, the Iceland Symphony is there, and and um, yeah, it's it's right on the harbor. Has the most beautiful views. It's like my home away from home. I spent almost every day there while I was in high school, just uh, doing various things. Now, speaking of Iceland, I love the fact that there's a place called Narvik. Oh, Narvik, yeah. Yes. Well, we named it after you. It's just kind of like Nardwar. Yeah, it's just exactly like Nardwar. Well, we named it after you. I, what's Nardvik like? Like Viking world is there. It's near the airport. Yeah, Nardvik is near the airport. I, you know. Sorry about my pronunciation. Oh, no, that's all right. I wanted to be Nardvik. Nardwick. Well, we'll just start. We'll call it that instead. Um, Nardwick is, um, I mean, there's not too much to say about it. I, I, Have you been to Viking World? I, I, ha- I haven't been to Viking World, no. But you could argue that Iceland is Viking World. Baha boom. Yeah, yeah. What about Altamir School? Altamir School? In Iceland. Oh, my goodness. Altamir School. My elementary school of two or three years. Um, that was quite an experience. Yeah, I, I, that was the first school I went. I lived in Washington, D.C. for two years when I was a kid. And when I moved back in 2008, that was, that was the school I attended. And it was, um, it was all right. And Levy, I have some more gifts for you. Right now, these are some gifts for you. Oh. What can you say about Keely Smith? Keely Smith, I mean, I think she's most well known for, for, for I Wish You Love, which I, I, I too have a cover of. It's a beautiful song by Shel Trenet. It's, yeah, I pl- I, I'm actually playing it tonight on cello. And this is from 1959. 59, wow. That's... And tonight, 2023. Yeah, and you know it's funny. I that my one of my favorite parts of the sets is when I sing this song or other jazz standards because you know everyone's singing along, and it's so funny to think that in 2023 there should be a group of young people still singing songs from this time. It's crazy. And underneath we have another gift for you. Oh my goodness, Louis Prima! This is this is a beautiful cover. Wow, breaking it up from 1958. More Keeley. More Keeley. And look at this trumpet. I signed a trumpet last night on stage. It was quite something. It was the first trumpet I've ever signed. I wish I could play trumpet. How many instruments do you play? Like if people go to the gig tonight, you mentioned cello. There's going to be guitar. What else? Violin? No, uh, t- piano. So those three. Oscar Peterson piano, maybe. The, oh, I, I could only wish. I need to practice to get, get to that level, to deserve to play that piano. But we'll see. And underneath, another gift for you. Another Louis Prima. This is Aunt Keely Smith. And? And, and Sam Butera and the Witnesses. This is beautiful. From 1957. 1957. Wow. We've got the 50s down pat, huh? What can you say about this record or these records or Keely Smith or Prima or Butera? I mean, this is just the, the best music. It's just my favorite music. And you might, my whole, my whole thing as an artist is to kind of bring the sounds of this time back so i mean i love i love getting records thank you so much oh, sure no problem and the gifts continue believe it or not we have also some stan gets oh, for you God. i love stan gets and what can you say about stan gets well i i used to see stan gets his trumpet every single day at berkeley i went to a uh, I went to Ber- Berkeley College of Music and the library there is a Stan Getz library and, and his uh, saxophone was on display. So I, I love him. I, I love the, the records he's, uh, the Bossa Nova records he's done. That's kind of my favorite, favorite of the bunch. And that's from 1959. Wow, more 1959. And lastly, another gift for you, Levy, obviously from 1962, some Ella. I love Ella. Ella's my favorite. Well, yes, she is. I have a lot of favorites, but Ella was the first musician that truly, uh, I think, I think, t- told me it, it was what made me want to become a jazz singer. I think she she sings like a cello, which is the best. And you cover some of her, like making whoopee. Oh yeah, making whoopee is such a fun one, underrated tune. I think it's um, if you really dig into the lyrics, you'd you'd find that it's quite. And some amazing David Stone Martin artwork as well. It's just absolutely stunning. Thank you so much. This is crazy. My goodness. 
But I, I mean, this is the music that inspires my writing the most. Quote, one more kiss, wine-stained lips, D organic cheddar, bunnies. Organic cheddar, but that's on my rider. <laughs> yeah. How'd you get my rider? Well, you're Levy. We have to know. That's true. I've, I've heard you. You have a knack for digging things out. But the cheddar bunnies. What can you say about the cheddar? You love cheddar. You love cheese. I, I do love cheese. And, and the unfortunate thing is I have to lay off a little bit on the dairy when I'm on the road because it's bad for my throat. But the cheddar bunnies is where I cheat. Ever had tinned rye bread from a hot spring? I absolutely have. Explain that. Well, there's a part of, there's, there's a little town outside of Reykjavik, not far, called Kverakjerde, which basically means it's, what's a, what's a kver in English? It's, it's, a, it's a, a part of the country where a lot of, there's a lot of really hot water due to, you know, proximity to volcanic activity that is very close to the surface. So, what what people do in Kvedagerde or historically have done is they make rye bread in the ground. So they put it in a pot and then they just put it in the ground because the hot water is so close to the earth and the, the bread just bakes um, underground, but quite close to the surface because it's so hot. And it's really, really good with some cheese and butter. Possibly a Levy song? B ab about, about the, yeah, uh, I would a love- A future song. I would totally write a song about rye bread that's cooked in the earth from Iceland. And Lei, I have another gift for you from 1967, a downbeat jazz yearbook from 1967. This is, this is history right here. And notice what's on the cover is... Is jazz going long hair? So yes. Is it? Did it? Yes, it is. <laughs> ba boom. And actually I've marked different places for you to open up. Oh my goodness, do you want me to open them up? Yes, now? please. Okay. And this is a gift for Leve, a downbeat from 67. This is legendary, thank you. Check out some Thelonious Monk sheet music. <laughs> Straight no chase. I love sheet music. I love sheet music. What is your relationship with sheet music? Like, you leaked your album. I did. I thought it'd be really funny, like a week before uh, Bewitched came out, my album came out, to leak the entire album, but only in sheet music form. And then the kids who, you know, actually paid attention and, and uh, learned how to sight read could could play the whole record and it was really fun because then um, I encouraged everyone to send in their their covers or their versions of of the songs and it was really interesting to see the kind of untainted versions of the songs and it was it was so much fun it was kind of like a haha -ha moment for me I hear some more sheet music for you yeah I love it which you hide sometimes oh yeah I love hiding sheet music for my fans to find and have they found it Oh yes, they have. I've been hiding. I've I've gone into bookstores and hidden them before, and been like, "Go get them." Who canceled? Who canceled? Who canceled? Because you got Kimmel. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's right. Oh my God, I don't even was it. The band Ghost. Was it the band Ghost. No. Why am I making this up? I'm just making things up. It could be the band Ghost, but somebody canceled and you stepped in. Yeah, somebody canceled. My my manager called me like at 6 p.m. the day before shooting and said, you know, the, this band that's meant to go on tomorrow seems to be uh, testing positive for COVID. And if they test positive tomorrow, you, you go home and practice. So thank you who canceled. Thank you whoever who canceled. I will figure out who you are and I'll send you a handwritten note. And it turns you on to Iceland, like Iceland was turned on to Leve, weirdly enough. Yeah, I think, funnily enough, I that was kind of, I think, the first moment that people in Iceland started to know of, of who I was. It's, you know, usually artists in Iceland start, they break out of Iceland and they prove to the rest of the world who they are. I feel like I've kind of done the backwards motion of, of proving to Iceland who I am. And Levy, you're here in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. I want to ask you about these gigs that happened in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada in the past. What can you say about these gigs and these people? This is so cool. I love Errol Garner. 
such a technically just perfect pianist. Oh my God, this is beautiful. Considered the world's greatest jazz pianist. Playing at Izzy's Supper Club in Vancouver. I thought it was Jay. Well, I don't have very good eyes, so Izzy's. Izzy was right. He is. Supper club. Have you played any supper clubs? Have people like eaten salad while listening to Leve? Yeah, I played at um, Blue Note uh, in Tokyo recently. Um, there, there was a supper club. I played at a, a jazz club called Catalina in LA recently as well. It's really. What's it like to like see people eating while you're playing? It's so cool. I, I, I love that I, I get to play all these different types of situations and where, you know, one, one is almost like a sit down dinner and, and the next is just like a group of kids huddled together and screaming the lyrics. It's it's uh, it's very special. But there is something, I think, because when people are eating and then they're they're really listening. So it's, it's cool. And right underneath, we have another gig that happened in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada at the cave. Oh, the Mills Brothers. And what can you say about the Mills Brothers and Levy? Just, I mean, I've been so inspired by their harmonies. I mean, I opened, my album opens on a cold a cappella kind of four, close four-part harmony, which is very inspired by the Mills Brothers. So I love them. And right underneath we have... The Ink Spots, also another another incredible close part harmony, four-part harmony group. Um, also have inspired me a lot. I love the little talking bits that they do in between their sing, like uh, their recording with uh, with on into each life some rain must fall with Ella Fitzgerald, and in in between one of them is like into each life some rain must fall. It's very cool. And that's in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. And actually, I have a gift for you, Another gift. an Ink Spots record. Wow. Thank you. I love all the colors that are going on here. That's what a what a pop. And got the nice guitar and everything. Will we hear any ink spots tonight? Will we be hearing the ink spots tonight? Like you do some sort of request, don't you? Like a question and answer, that sort of stuff, right? Yeah. I mean, I have kind of all over this. I just can't really, I don't, I'm really bad at not talking. So I just, you know, I love answering questions and I have a little acoustic set pre pre show as well where I ask, you know, what what song I want to hear. So maybe I will. I mean, I've What do people ask for? Do people ask you to play songs? Y yeah, yeah, they do. They ask me to play, you know, my own songs or covers and and I always do it. TikTok. TikTok. How did you do it? How did you do it? Was it the sped up songs that they help? Of of I mean of of course sped up songs have have been you know a help it's a it's a it's a hilarious phenomenon that I'm sure we'll look back at in many years and and be like whoa that was odd like what are your TikTok tips my TikTok tips well I mean I truly just enjoy it I think as an artist to get to interact with my audience like that is really fun. Um, it's definitely a very unfiltered version of myself, which I kind of just enjoy showing that side of myself. It's um, I yeah, it's it's a blessing and a curse, but I think a blessing in that it's you know you can wake up one day and make a video and and have a song go viral and and it can change your life forever, which is kind of what happened for me. So, but it's a lot of work, isn't it? Like you posting every day. <laughs> it is. I mean, it is a lot of work. Um. But it's 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 part of the job right now, and I again I enjoy it. Nobody ever tells me to make TikToks. That's my my key. The second someone starts me to tell making them tell, the second someone starts to tell me to make them, I'll probably not want to do them. But it's fun. It's quite amazing from TikTok, a YouTube to like a sold out tour. <laughs> I, I, that's not easy, is it? Have you met other people that have had that sort of success? That's amazing. Um. I mean, yeah, yeah. I I feel really, really lucky. It's it's cool, especially, you know. It, I think another part of, you know, me really valuing TikTok and social media is that, you know, I make this music that's very, you know, it's it oftentimes sounds very old and it's inspired by you know jazz sounds and classical sounds and, and I knew I wanted to introduce it to new ears and a young audience and, and that audience is on TikTok. So. I mean, when I started touring, I, I was very humbled and, and happy to see that that people wanted to actually come out to the shows. 
was the first indication that people were going to come out? I mean, we put up uh, shows in, in L.A. and New York, a Moroccan Lounge in L.A. and a Rockwood Music Hall in New York, and kind of had no clue what to expect. And there were like pretty little shows and they sold out pretty quickly. And I think that was the, but I still, it didn't feel real because everything had been so on the internet because of COVID. Um, but then when I played Rockwood for the first time and kind of saw the line of, of people outside, I, I think that was the first time I was like, whoa, I think something's happening here. <laughs> Scowl. 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 Scowl, where's the drink? Cheers. 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 Icelandic. I'm right on that, right? Yeah, yeah. But there's no word for please in Icelandic? No. I mean, not really. I'm brain farting. I don't think so. Not not technically. No. Amazing. I mean, people say please. Like people, people say use please. But there's no actual word for yeah, please. There are different, different forms of it. I mean, you can say like get the thought, which means like do do it, um, <laughs> which doesn't sound very polite either. Um, yeah. Why should people care about leve? Why should people care? I mean. Um, I, 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 I don't know why they should care. Um, I make music that I hope will appeal to many ears. So maybe they'll care because of that. Uh, I want to, I want to bring, I want to bring jazz and classical music back to, to a new generation. Well, thanks so much, Leve. Keep on rocking in the free world and do, do loot. Do, do, do. Yeah. Did I do it right? <laughs> I'm afraid to breathe. Do-do-do-do-do.